Okay, we're live. Today on Authors and Illustrators, we from all this remote learning for kids and teachers and principals and moms and dads that are out there, we're still indoors. Uh, don't forget to take care of yourselves. And today we have Ralph Massiello, a wonderful illustrator. He was on a few days ago, but I invited him back because he's going to do a drawing lesson today for all you kids out there. And before he does a drawing lesson, I'll just remind you of a few things. Ralph illustrated uh, the frog alphabet book for me. He illustrated the reptile alphabet book for me. He illustrated the extinct alphabet book. He illustrated the icky bug alphabet book. He illustrated the icky bug counting book. And he illustrated the skull alphabet book. So there you go. That's Ralph Massiello. And of course, he could tell you, he'll be telling you, he has his own drawing books. He and I did, uh, what, six or seven books together. And then he went off on his own. He did his own drawing books. He did a fabulous job. I love his drawing books. Last week when we had him on, I said his dragon, uh, dragon drawing book has the coolest cover of any children's book I've ever seen. Hey, before we go any further, and I turn it over to Ralph. Uh, uh, Ralph, I'll tell you what, I'll tell the... Uh, the everybody one story. Here is a painting you did. I finally got it framed. And uh, when we did the Icky Bug book, no, uh, the reptile book. When we did the reptile book, here we go. Uh, there was a page where one of the creatures had a really long tongue. So we were debating how can we show the tongue? I hope I can find it. And maybe I have the wrong book. Uh, let's see, where did it go? We were debating, oh, here it is. Chameleon. How to show the really long tongue. So look what we did. There's the chameleon. He has a really long tongue. He catches bugs with his tongue. I call Ralph up and Ralph had an idea. Why don't we do it over three pages? So there's one, there's page two. Ralph used to joke and tell everyone that he got just as much money for this page. It's true. This page. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then look, you turn the page of the book, and there it is. There's a dragonfly that the uh, chameleon caught. So look, uh, when Ralph really did the painting, there's the actual painting right there. So how do you like that, teachers, kids? There's a real painting. It got to be in the book. And you can see, this is a really long painting. I haven't figured out in my house where, where I was going to put it. What do you think, Ralph? Should I put it over my bed? No, I put it in the bathroom. <laughs> That's right. You've never gone more than one hour without talking about the bathroom. Hey, ready? How do you like teachers, kids, parents? Uh, this is a cover Ralph did for me. And is that the right way? Yeah. The front of the cover is right there. So look, this is the extinct. Someone said I should get back. This is the extinct um, cover. And there it is right there. Beautiful job, Ralphie. It's one of my favorite covers of all my books. And here's the actual cover. See, later on, we laid the type on there. And down below, you see our names. Jerry Pilata, that's me. And Ralph Massiello, that's Ralphie right there. He's going to give a drawing lesson in a few minutes. How do you like that cover, kids, teachers? Isn't that great? I have one more cover to show because I don't know if it showed very well last week. How do you like this? Here is the cover to the, this is a beautiful painting. Here's the cover of the reptile alphabet book. And sure enough, if I lay the cover on top of there, you can barely tell the difference. Look, look at that. How do you like that, Ralph? You like seeing your out like that? Is that pretty good? I, I like that. That looks great. Look at that. There it is right there. And look, there it is right uh, still there. Still my favorite cover of, of all the ones th that I've done for you is, is the is the skull alpha uh, the skull alphabet book. And if you, you give me a second, I'll go I'll go to the towards the back of my go get it. I'll, I'll show I'll them. go get it. It's on the wall here. I'll take it down. Yeah. And of course, Ralph thinks he's funny. Look, he put Mickey Mouse ears over here on this cactus right there. I guess he just wanted Kit to see if kids would notice the Mickey Mouse ears right there. So good going, Ralph. Nice book. And these reptiles are so real looking. And you're such a tight painter when you really get going. You're such a beautiful painter. Oh, that's the skull cover? 
Yeah, this is the skull alphabet book cover. I don't know if they can see that or not. There it is. This is the skull cover. Beautiful. That is really nice. I remember saying to you, I had a vision of marble. Do marble, you know? Well, and I remember I, you sent me you sent me a um, a postcard from from Italy of the catacombs with all the um, all the, the the skulls of, of of priests and stuff throughout history made into and, and, oh, yeah. and walls and things and, and I thought well that's, you know kind of do that with with, with this so that's, that's that church near the U.S. Embassy in Rome the, yeah well that's where I get the idea to do that particular cover from the postcard you sent me when you're there go in and there's the skulls of 500 monks from 500 years ago I yeah. remember pretty spooky it yeah, says that, what you are we once were what we are you will be that was a pretty spooky sign right in front of <laughs> skulls but we were working on the skull book at the time yeah i remember sending you that postcard beautiful job though on the skull you know how you're talking about the mickey mouse ears yeah. i want to show something a little inside joke in the skull alphabet book and kids will probably get this one uh some kids get it some kids don't the letter l is a lion skull yeah and i don't know if they can see that or not but there's yeah. a lion skull <laughs> This Where, is what I think. What's the I joke that, there? Here's the joke. Na, 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 na. That's the joke for anyone that knows that. Hey, Ralph, can I show them something no, else? That's, that's, that's Pride Rock from the Lion King. Yep. Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> you ready, kids out there, parents? Here's a joke that Ralph played on me. It's, uh, ready? Uh, if you look closely, if you look in the trees, uh, and you look at the leaves, it says, let me see if I can get a little closer. I can see it pretty well here. It says, find Jerry in the trees, find Jerry. And of course, I didn't know he did this, but I know that he called my wife up and he got a, he got a photograph without telling anyone. And sure enough, later on, look what he did. He uh, used my head as a rock. So there, look, see, there's me right there. But he used my the rock. It's been years and years and years since I've done that, and I still find it funny. Yeah, I, I have that somewhere. I, I I gotta I gotta put that up somewhere. That's that a one is, that one's a that's a frameable piece. You need that in your house. <laughs> yeah, that's a Tasmanian pouched wolf, yeah. which is extinct. And sure enough, if you go over to the Museum of uh, Natural History, it used to be the Museum of Comparative Zoology. The Museum of Natural History at Harvard University in Boston. Teachers, parents, whoever's out there listening, kids, if you come to Boston, you got to go to the Museum of Natural History at Harvard, 26 Oxford Street, and you have to go in there and you'll see an extinct Tasmanian pouched wolf. So they have one stuff that is there. You know what my uncle used to say? We have their DNA. We could build them. That's what my uncle used to say about the Tasmanian pouched wolf. Your, your, uh, uncle, your uncle scared me a bit, I gotta tell you. <laughs> it, that's a funny joke Ralph played on me. I think there's one more in here somewhere. Um, well, the, the, the long neck lizard, they're the Tanistrophius, which is a, um, the extra letter T page. Yeah. On the edge of the cliff, it says, Jerry was here. Oh, uh, yeah, he says that in the cliff there, right there, yeah. Yeah, you can see it down on the bottom there. Jerry Sorry. was here. Yeah, um, that's, old. that's not the one I was thinking of. I love this one. So on one of the pages, we didn't know what the uh, creature looked like because it's extinct and no one really knows what it was like. I think it's a fish called an undina, undina, an extinct fish. So on the letter U, look, here's the letter U. I told Ralph, just because we don't know what the creature looked like, just spill some paint, just spill some paint so ralphie spilled some paint but when you really look at it closely you realize it's it's elvis there's elvis right there so ralphie did that yeah, well i spent yeah. a lot of time by myself you know working i have to entertain myself <laughs> again yeah. like i said last week how many, how many people catch that uh, you know some people uh, some people don't sometimes I've, I've talked to librarians that have read that book over and over and over to kids and have never seen the, the the picture of you 
uh, nor the the Elvis. Yeah, but do you think when they look at me, they see how? Uh, and then just for fun, I'll show. Some, here's some other ones Ralph did. This was from the dinosaur book. Ralph did this beautiful painting, and uh, here's another one. And let's see. Oh yeah, I love this Ralphie. I love this one. Yeah, here's the, the the frilled lizard. Frilled lizard from the reptile book. I mean, if you're a kid and you're reading a book, don't you want to meet the frilled lizard? He is so cool. And uh, I might have a couple more, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, Ralph. It's your day. Um, we're, going to, we're going to have a great time. And let's see. How, oh, yeah. Sure that, uh, see, this is the title page of the reptile book. Yeah, I love that one. That's an emerald tree boa. An emerald tree boa. Look at the painting. And of course, that's an oil paint. Ralph doesn't use tricks. He doesn't use computers. He uh, painted it in oil paints. The background was airbrushed, though, right? Yeah. That's like a yeah, I, I would uh, I would airbrush different color backgrounds so that each page would have a different a different color, so it wouldn't be a red then another red. So I would just randomly airbrush background colors, and then I'd paint whatever on top of them. Yeah. With and with I oil paints. I believe this is the cover of the dinosaur book. Oh, I forgot to bring the dinosaur book down. But I believe that's the cover of the dinosaur book right yeah, there. I was doing that one during the time my, my wife was giving birth to our first child, Alexa. Um, and and uh, that, that, that was a little stressful time doing that book because it was yeah. just at the time my, my, my wife was giving birth to, to uh, I love, my daughter. I love how you, I love how you, uh, you uh, how old are your kids now? My oldest daughter is going to be 30. Alexa is going to be 30 on June 14th. And my youngest daughter is, uh, is 24. Wow. So um, I love how Ralph painted really different colored dinosaurs. You know, most books, they're just gray. They're just blue. Or they're, I mean, they're light gray or dark gray or, you know, maybe dark green. I think that's it. I don't know if I have any other paintings here today. I think that's it for what I have of yours. Beautiful job, Ralph. Thank you. Oh, here's one. Here's one from the Skull Book. In, uh, it's a Aaron. Nothra. Yeah, that's the X page of the Skull Book. And, and you if you see. notice, I hide things in that book. I hid the presidents. You can see on that page. Yeah. And that's canvas. You can tell it, it, it is uh, Jimmy Carter, I yeah. think. Want to write? Yeah. Jimmy it's Carter's down there. Jimmy Carter down there. And, right? uh, and, and Ronald and Reagan. Reagan. Ronald yeah. Reagan is up above there, upside down on yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, oh. so I guess I could turn it upside down. Yeah. Yeah. There he is right there. He's in the cactus right there. All oh. right. I showed enough stuff. Great yeah. job. Ralph. Beautiful books. They're all still in print. They all sell really well. And kids love them and teachers love them. We're lucky guys. So we, and we were we were very lucky. The Skull Alphabet book won the 2004 New York State Charlotte Award. Yeah, uh, all the kids in the state of New York voted that their favorite book, not in the younger kid uh, division, but in the older kid division and the intermediate. I, it, was, it was kind of funny that, uh, you know, the alphabet book was up against one of Jerry Spinelli's novels. And yeah. the funny thing is, every time I see Jerry Spinelli, uh, I'll say, you know, quickly joke, hey, remember the time the, uh, the alphabet book beat your novel? <laughs> and he'll, he'll be like, uh, uh, stop, stop, Ralph. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's enough. I've heard that joke enough. And too many times. Yeah. Well, it's because he's a Phillies fan and we're Red Sox fans. I have to do that. <laughs> That's right. You have to razz him. All right. There you go. Okay. So um, am, I, uh, am I on screen? Because I see Jerry Large here. So I don't know. Am I up on screen here? Yeah, I think you're on screen. I, uh, I just want to make sure everybody yeah. can see me. Yes, you're okay. on screen. So what I'm going to do today is... Um, I, I'm going to be drawing some things from uh, s from some of my books, my how to draw books, but um, some of them are not in any books yet. So the first thing I want to do, I'll just quickly, for those of you that uh, weren't here last week, I'll just quickly go through some of these books that I did. Uh, you know, I did the Icky Bug book with Jerry. That was the first book I did for kids. Yucky Reptile, Frog, Dinosaur Alphabet book. Icky Bug Counting book, The Extinct Alphabet book. Then I did a, a book for author Pam Munoz Ryan, and I actually have to turn around to get that book. 
Um, this book right here, The Flag We Love, which is a, a very popular book. That was dedicated to my dad who was in World War II. Um, then I did a, a book for Stephanie Brockway and it's called The Mystic Files Beast Book. This is, a, this is an older kid's book. This is a visual journal of a fictitious 13 year old girl who's set off on a quest by a mysterious person to do research into mythological creatures. And while she's doing research, the mythological creatures start entering her real life and causing all kinds of problems, which will actually lead to the uh, next book in the series. Um, but then I, I, I visit a lot of schools, just like Jerry. I visit a lot of schools. I've been to over 2,800 schools. And back in the 1990s, I would draw a little beetle because kids were always asking me how to draw things. And I, I'd, I'd have to sit down and, and draw these, these little pictures with them. And, and uh, usually during my programs, I draw something more detailed, but the kids seemed to want something simple. So I would use a, a letter O, a letter U, a letter T, and a Z to make a beetle. And because of that, um, I started doing these how to draw books. And the first one was the bug drawing book. I also did a dinosaur drawing book, which I don't seem to have here with me. Um, ocean drawing book. Um, I made a mistake last week and I did, this, did the same thing again today. I grabbed some Chinese versions of my book. also did a Christmas drawing book. There's the dragon book. There's the Halloween book. But again, that's in Chinese for some reason. Um, the farm drawing book. A robot drawing book. This is one of my favorites, the Ancient Egypt How to Draw book. Uh, and then I did the fairy drawing book. And this is my brand new one. This came out last September, the Alien Drawing Book. And then this is a book that just came out this past month called The, uh, the Fantastic Fruits, a Grimmauld Grove Coloring Book. So this is actually a, um, a coloring book for adults or kids. And actually towards the end is uh, kind of honoring my how to draw books. I show you how to draw a dragon fruit. And then you turn the dragon fruit into a dragon. So you flip the dragon fruit upside down and you turn it into a dragon fruit dragon. So that's a little uh, honoring of my of my uh, my drawing books. Um, last week when I was here with Jerry, I showed everybody how to make an easel. And some of you have already done that. And I'm gonna show this again. A lot of times when I visit schools, they don't have a good easel. They have these tripod easels, these little spindly wooden, wooden easels. And sometimes they give me a pad of paper and they put it right on there. And it flops around. It's like, a, it, it's like you're trying to draw in water. And so Jerry and I were actually at a school in Michigan and a principal uh, and Jerry and I were trying to figure out how to make an easel. And we looked over and there was a six foot Rubbermaid folding table. And I thought, let me grab that. So I locked in a set of legs. And I stood it up and it's become my favorite easel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my, my uh, I'm gonna turn my camera over here a little bit. There's some of my house here. And I'm gonna get the, uh, get the table. Okay. So this is a six foot folding table. And a lot of people have these in their garages. And all I do is I lock one set of legs down. See the legs down the bottom. I'll lift it up so you can see. Drop the set of legs down and then make sure it's locked in in place. And then what you'll do is you'll stand the thing up nice and tall. And I, actually, I'm going to bring uh, my light over here a little better so there's better light on this. And what you do is you'll tape paper onto the surface. Now, if you have the big, big pads of paper, you can have a nice big, nice big drawing. So I, I use the, uh, the big chart pack paper and um, I'm gonna tape this up. Now, Jerry, if you wanna do a little talking while I'm taping some paper up, uh, that'd be great. Um, okay. I would say that most authors and illustrators never meet each other. Somehow Ralph and I got to work together, mostly because I, self-publishing. I did my first four books by myself. In fact, last time we spoke, I got a, te a text and an email from a stranger and said, tell us about yourself. But I've already done a few shows, so I didn't say much about myself. But the, I, my first book was the Ocean Alphabet book. And after that, I met Ralph and he did the Icky Bug Alphabet. And we actually met regularly. So we got to know each other. We got to design the book together. 
you know, and Ralph taught me a lot. Like, he, you know, he taught me stuff I never imagined. He taught me about uh, color you could sort of see through, a color that's really solid. He taught me about somber colors, like you look at them and you're, you're sad. And he taught me about happy colors. And he taught me, like, if something was really bright, put a dull background behind it. It all sounds really um, common sense, but if you've never done a book before, how would you know? And then he, he taught me if something was really dull, we'd have to put a really bright background to make it pop better. So uh, he taught me about putting a, a trap line around things, you know? And um, he taught me how if we look at a Disney character, it, it doesn't have a black line around it, it has a brown line around it for some reason. Disney used brown traps around cre uh, creatures or uh, characters that they made. Uh, Ralph also taught me about Caravaggio. So I didn't really know Caravaggio. People know Michelangelo, they know Da Vinci, you know, they know all those guys, but Caravaggio. I'm out of focus for some reason. I think Ralph is Caravaggio incarnated, you know? So. What, am I in focus again? What? I, I went out of focus for a minute. No, you okay, look good. I, I'm ready to draw. So the, all you kids, all you teachers, um, get out your paper, your pencils, your markers, uh, your crayons if you want them. And we're going to start to draw. I'm, I'm going to do the one that started my whole How to Draw series. This is how it all began. And I've done this in hundreds of schools over the years. And the first thing I want to do is show you the letters I'm going to use. I'm going to use the letter O a letter U, a letter T, and a letter Z. You remember this one, Gary? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna make a beetle from four letters of the alphabet. Now this is very simple. Kindergarten kids, preschool kids, this is what I would draw with them. So I'm gonna start by making an O or an oval. There's your body of your beetle. Now for the head, I'm gonna let everybody do that. Okay. Yeah, you break, your, your mic is breaking up a little bit. Um, for the head, I'm gonna use the letter U, but I'm gonna turn it upside down. I'm gonna make it short and wide, kind of like a big frown over the top. So I'm gonna go up and down like that. So there's the head of your beetle. For two eyes, I make uh, two upside down letter U's right here. Kind of little bumps, upside down letter U there, upside down letter U there. They're really short and wide. For two antenna, we're gonna make two upside down letter U's. Now I'm gonna let everybody catch up. I know there's some little kids probably watching, so I wanna let them have time to catch up. So the antenna are also gonna be upside down letter U's. So coming out of the head, you're gonna go up and over and down, upside down letter U. Then you're going to go up and over and down, upside down letter U. There's your two antenna. Now, beetles, when they come to rest, now they have wings, but when they come to rest, the wings fold up over their back. And I'm going to use the letter T to make the wings folded over the back. Now, it's, it's an uppercase letter T, not a lowercase, not a small letter T, but the big letter T. So you're going to go all the way across. And then you're going to go down, the letter T. And while the kids are drawing that, I'm going to talk about the legs. Now, insects have six legs, and they're usually segmented. They're, they're bent up, you know. So we're going to use letter Z, and you only touch the beginning of the Z to the side of the body. So on the right-hand side, you're going to make three of these, just with the beginning of the letter Z touching the side of the body. Z, Z. Z. Now, on the opposite side, you're going to make the Z's backwards. Kindergarten, preschool, and first graders, they make great backwards Z's. They just do them automatically. So, make it easy. Let's start the body. You're going to go away from the body, toward the body, and away. Away, toward, away. Away, toward, away. So, there's your beetle design. Now, when you're done, you want to decorate your beetle with some kind of pattern. It could be a ladybug. You could put some ovals here or something. But I've seen kids make cookie bugs, pizza bugs, uh, teacher bugs. I always do this. I put some stars and stripes on mine. So I'm going to put some stars on it. 
You can put whatever you want. You can put hearts on yours. So there's my stars and the stripes. They're red and white. And the white is the paper. So there's my Yankee Doodle Bug. Call that the Yankee Doodle Bug. And when you're done, always sign your artwork. So I'm going to use it. Actually, I'm going to use the black here. Uh, sign your artwork. So here's my signature, my autograph, Ralph, mashed potatoes and gravy. I was at a school in uh, Texas about 25 years ago, and a kid called me Mr. Messy Jello. So now kids are always calling me different names, Mr. Mozzarella, Mr. Mashed Potatoes, Mr. Messy Fellow, uh, Mr. Meatball, Mr. Mosquito. I get them all. Uh, 2020. Now, if it's an original drawing, and here's a little... Uh, lesson for adults too. If it's an original drawing and you haven't copied anybody else's, you put a C with a circle around it before your name. That means copyright. That means nobody can copy your art without their permission. Um, in 1987, no, 1978, the copyright law that existed since 1905 changed for artwork. Anytime you create an original piece of artwork, and you haven't copied anybody else's, the instant you create it, it's actually copyright. It's called statutory copyright law. So all your artwork is copywritten as long as it's original. People say, no, you have to pay for copyright. That's not true. Copyright is intellectual property. What they're talking about is when you register your copyright with the Library of Congress or something like that. But uh, even kids' artwork, as long as it's original, it's copywritten. So uh, how'd you guys do on that one? You guys ready for the next one? Okay, we're going to do the next one. I'm going to take this off here. Jerry, you can talk a little bit while I... Uh, Put up another piece of paper. Sure. So um, I've seen Ralph when he when he drew that bug. It had he used a, a huge O when he started out a, a really huge O. But I've seen him do a really skinny O. And when you do a really skinny O, it makes the bug be a totally different kind of bug. All right, go ahead. All right. So the next one we're going to do is a simple, simple <laughs> robot. And I love doing robots with little kids because robots are geometric shapes. And little kids are learning about their squares and their rectangles and their circles and things like that. So we're gonna start with a rectangle. I'm gonna start with a rectangle going this way. Now your rectangle can go this way. This is your drawing, but I'm gonna start my rectangle kind of going sideways, kind of tip sideways. I'm gonna make a rectangle that goes down like this. There's a rectangle. Everybody got their rectangle? Now down below it, and not even touching it, down below, I'm gonna put a circle. I'm gonna make a circle right here. So a circle, that's gonna be its belly. Not a perfect circle, but that's okay. So you got the head and the body. How are you gonna connect your head to your body? Now you could use two lines going down, you could have electricity holding it up. Use your imagination a little bit. I like to make it into a spring. And to make a spring, I'm gonna make a spiral line. It's gonna go around and around and around and around and then touch the body. So you're gonna go around and around and around and touch the body. Spring, boing, 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 it's springing. Now I'm not gonna do the arms yet. I'm gonna do the feet. Even before I do the legs, I'm gonna do the feet way down the bottom here. I'm gonna put a line and up and down a half circle. A line up and down a half circle. So these are on the ground. We're gonna need some legs here. I'm gonna actually make a rectangle on the bottom here and a rectangle on the bottom here. How are you gonna connect your feet to your body? Again, you could do springs, you could do two lines, maybe have a kneecap in the middle. So I'm gonna make a little kneecap. I'm gonna make a circle in the middle here, a circle. So how is this gonna connect all together? You could do two lines going down to that circle, two lines going down to that circle. And then I have two lines going down to the feet. So there's my little robot's legs. It needs some arms, right? Okay, so I'm gonna have, think of this as 
um, dominoes. You know when you have to set up your dominoes and you knock them down, they all fall down? Think of five dominoes, just lines. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to go over here. One, two, three, four, five. Those are going to be arms. What you're going to do is you're going to make a wavy line. And a wavy line is like a smile. Smile, 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 smile. I walked a mile. Over here. Smile, 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 smile. I got eaten by a crocodile. Let you add a little fun to it. The bottom is going to be a frown. Frown, 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 frown. I wish I could go to town. Frown, 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 frown. I'm afraid of a clown. So you get your little arms. You might want to have a little cuff on the end. So I'm going to put a rectangle there and a rectangle there. Now I'm going to let kids catch up a little bit. Jerry, you want to say anything while the kids are catching up? Belly button. You want to do a belly button? Okay, we'll do a belly button right there. There's a the belly button. button. I'm going to actually do something with that belly button later. All right. Okay, so now we've got our arms and claws. This one's gonna kind of be tight because it's gonna go off the page. I'm gonna make a letter V on its side, a letter V, turn it on its side, letter V, and then a letter V right here. Those don't look like very good claws, but if you make it each one of those lines into a triangle, a triangle, a triangle, and a triangle, you've got little claws. So you get the little, little triangles for claws and they're gonna open and close. You can make your own kind of claws too. Robot needs eyes. Love to make big circular eyes. So I'm gonna make these really big, a big circle and a big circle. Somebody told me this looks kind of like Wall-E. Circle in a circle. I'll put a circle here and a circle here. And like I was saying last week, when I do the pupils, I like to leave a white highlight, a white spot on there. So I make a little circle inside, a circle inside, but I'm going to color around that circle. So leave a little white spot in the eye. If you've ever seen uh, manga drawings or anime drawings, they always have little white spots on the eyes. You can put a nose in here. Now my nose, uh, I like a triangle for right in there because it's see how it fits kind of nicely. So I'm going to put a little triangle right there. You can have a big giant mouth going across, or maybe I'm gonna do an oval, small little oval, like woo. Okay, so eyebrows show expression. Now, if I wanted an angry robot, I'd have eyebrows going down like this. If it was bored, it'd be eyebrows just going across like this. I wanna have my eyebrows kind of jumping off the top of the head. You're like, like woo. It needs. <laughs> I'll do a rectangle and a rectangle. You can do a triangle and a triangle. This one, you kind of use your imagination a little bit because you know it's a made up thing. And we'll have some antenna going up. And I'll put a heart shape on this one and a heart shape on that one. Oh, how romantic. My robot likes to think. I can't hear you, Jerry, your, your mic is muted. Hey, Ralph. Yeah. Sue Susan from Colorado has called in. And yes. Has, and I'm sorry, I can't read the question. Can you read it? Do you uh, always or, complete a drawing before painting it, or do you sketch and do most of the details while you're painting? Well, I always do sketches. I do hundreds of sketches when I work on a, a painting. I do hundreds of sketches, uh, small little thumbnail sketches. They're little tiny things, just you know, planning it out. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a better and better and better drawing. And then all I'll do is I'll transfer my good drawing onto a canvas or paper, and then I'll paint it in. But it always evolves as I'm painting it, I'm adding details. So uh, mine likes to think. So I'm gonna have a rectangle here. It's kind of a fun thing to do. A little rectangle on top of its head, a couple lines going up. Now I'm gonna get the letter C, and I'm gonna turn it upside down like this. Letter C, upside down. Now you have a light bulb. And you want to have the little inside of the light bulb. It's a skinny upside down letter U. And then two lines like this. I'm going to go back to this spiral line right here. You can have a zigzag, but I'm going to do a spiral. 
around and around and around and touch that. And you know what? Since Jerry made me do a belly button, there you go. Now, if I want to have it be a wind up robot, like, you know, a toy Ralph, robot. Ralph, I have a question. Yeah. Is this robot more intelligent than you? Quite possibly. <laughs> So then uh, I'm gonna make a wind up robot. I'll make two lines sticking out here. And this kind of looks like a number eight. So I'm gonna make a loop this way and a loop this way and kind of connect them together. It looks kind of like a peanut shape. And you're gonna put some circles in there and that's gonna wind up key be a robot. There you have it. Make sure you put your name on your drawing again. Ralph Mozzarella, I mean Massiello 2020. Copyright symbol, but you, I give you permission, you can copy that if you like, you can draw that whatever way you want. Okay, I'm gonna get ready for another piece of paper. So Jerry, if you wanna talk a little bit while I'm getting another piece of paper ready. Yeah. Um, I was trying to think of, uh, Ralph and I have, ha Ralph and I have talked about doing another book together. We haven't done a book together for, I think over 20 years, but uh, we might do another book. You know, we've been talking about it. So I won't give the idea. Do a, I've always wanted to do a parasite alphabet. The pesty, uh, the, pesty, the pesty parasite alphabet book. Like, you know, D is for Dutch elm disease. T is for tapeworm. How disgusting tapeworm would be. But kids would love it. So this one I'm going to actually turn horizontally. Actually, you know, and I, I'll turn it the long way too. It'd be easier. And this one is going to be a teddy bear. We're going to make a teddy bear. And we're going to start now. You're going to do this up here. We're going to make an oval up here. And the body is going to be down here. So if you get your finger and you just kind of figure out there's an oval and a bigger oval for the body, it's like a number eight, the head and the body, the head and the body, the head and the body. So I'm going to make an oval. And I tend to make my oval for my teddy bear a little bit fuzzy, a little bit bumpy. So it's an oval. I tell kids it, it looks like a cookie. So here you have a cookie floating in space. The Adventures of Space Cookie. Okay, so now down the bottom here, we're going to make a bumpy letter U. So this is actually going to be like a letter U down here. Bumpy, 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 bumpy. So it's like a bumpy letter U. And... Um, so it looks like a weird kind of pineapple or something. I don't know. Uh, or uh, an oval with a tongue sticking up. And then right here, you're going to make a letter U. Oh, no, I drew a toilet in school. That's terrible. I can't believe I drew a toilet in online school. Okay, so now we've got this, this tongue thing. But we need the ear. So you're going to make an upside down letter U right here. And an upside down letter U right there. And you can make those bumpy, too. And inside that, an upside down letter U there, and an upside down letter U there. Of course, your teddy bear needs arms and legs. You need your arms and your legs. We'll start by making really simple stick lines. I'm going to let kids catch up a little bit, Jerry. So we've got the head, which is a bumpy oval, a letter U, a letter U, upside down letter U, upside down letter U, upside down letter U, upside down letter U. Where this oval and the letter U meet, we're gonna make a line that goes out like this. And then when it goes out like this, those are gonna be the arms. Very skinny right now though. At the bottom, we're gonna make a line that goes out this way and out this way. So make them all about the same length. One that goes out this way, one that goes out this way. This drawing is actually in my Christmas drawing book as part of like the presents. Okay, so now you've got these really skinny arms and legs and the teddy bears needs to be kind of fuzzy and fun. That, that looks kind of skinny and not very fun to hold on to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out here and these are gonna look like musical notes. We're gonna go out to the end. We're gonna loop down and then back up. We're gonna make an oval. You kids know what an oval is. You're gonna go down and then back up. You're gonna go whoop, 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 whoop. And then the, these you are gonna go up and down. 
Those go down and up. This is gonna go up and then down. So you're gonna go up and then down, up and then down. Looks like golf clubs, doesn't it? Okay, so kids that are in second grade, they probably learn parallel lines. And so parallel lines are lines that are side by side that never cross over each other. And we're gonna make the other part of the arm, the, so it's nice and chubby. You're not gonna make the line here. You're not gonna make it here. You're gonna go way to the very bottom, not even right there. You're gonna go the way to the very bottom. You're gonna go in like this. You're not gonna go here. You're not gonna go here. You're not gonna go here. You're gonna go very bottom. And you're gonna bring that line in like that. With the bottoms, you're gonna go not here, not here, not here. You're gonna to go to the very top and go like this. You're going to go up here to the very top of this. You're going to go like this. Now you want to, I like to put pads on the bottom. So I do one, two, three, four, five, big oval. 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 Now the eyes. So for the eyes, you're going to go about halfway up here and you're going to make a circle and a circle. Oh, no, it's a zombie teddy bear. Run for your lives. It's a zombie teddy bear. Make a circle. Make a circle. Remember the highlight on the eyes. I'm going to leave a white spot on those eyes, too. Now again, you could uh, you could add things like eyelashes. Oh, pretty, beautiful! Oh, it's so adorable! And you could do the um, the eyebrows. You could have an angry teddy bear because it's been in quarantine too long. It's an angry teddy bear needs to get out and see the sun sunshine. Uh, but I like to do these eyebrows again too. Like it's kind of worried. Like woohoo! What happened? The nose, right here between the two circles. You're gonna make what looks like a frown. It's actually the top of the nose. Then you turn it into a pizza. It's a pizza nose bird bear. And now we're gonna make a letter W right here. I'm gonna pull this in a little closer. Maybe it needs to be a little closer so you guys can see a little better. Is that a little better? And then we'll make a letter W right there. And we'll put some smiles on it. And you put a little tongue on there. Now the fun thing, is what are you gonna do with the rest of it? Now, uh, you can dress it up. I'm gonna put some pants on, teddy bear. So put some pants on, and there's the bottom of the pants. And I'm gonna have a jacket, zigzag line down, zigzag line down, a uh, triangle, a triangle, a triangle, and a kite shape. And I'll make that into a tie, so I'll put some stripes on there. And I'm gonna put a top hat on its head. You can put whatever you want on yours. Mine is, uh, uh, a magician, so it's got a magic wand. So I'm gonna make a magic wand here, and it's going to a birthday party, and it's gonna bring a smile. But that smile is not really gonna be a smile. It's gonna be a cupcake. So you make a smile, make a line that goes up, a line that goes up. Then you're gonna make a bumpy line going across and then down, and a bumpy line going around like this. Put some lines on that, and I put some sprinkles on there. And maybe you can put a candle on there too. And there's my teddy bear going to the party. I'll sign my name here. Ralph Mellow Yellow. I mean, Ralph Massey Jello, Massey Yellow. And there's that one. Jerry, you want to say a little something while I uh, get another piece of paper? I know that the teddy bear was named after a Teddy Roosevelt when he was that's, president. That's correct. There you go. You could learn some nonfiction while you were drawing a teddy bear. And uh, I believe he was hunting grizzly bears at the time. And I forget the exact story of how it came to be. But they ended up calling baby they, uh, toy bears teddy bears after the president. So there you go. Okay, so this is going to start off. This is uh, something that's not in any of my books yet. This is not in any books yet. And again, this is gonna be something very simple and we're gonna use our imagination quite a bit. We're gonna make a weird, uh, kind of like a silly goofy monster. 
and I'm going to make a big circle for one eye and a small circle for another eye. So this monster, its eyes are circles. It's a big circle. And right next to that circle, I'm going to have another circle, but it's smaller. Yours could be the same size if you want. Are you, are, uh, are you writing a monster drawing book? Yeah, I want to do a monster drawing book. Yeah. I'm doing the unicorn drawing book right now. I'm finishing that one up. And then uh, I want to do moss, you know, goofy monsters, silly, goofy, you know, funny, silly ones that you can interchange arms and legs. You can put a head from one onto the body of another. Um, kind of like, you know, when we were kids, the creepy crawlers, Jerry, remember creepy crawlers where the, yeah, where the goo yeah you, you could put all the together. So kind of like that. So you get the two circles for eyes. Remember to make the little highlights on these eyes too. Well, someone has called and said, could you tell Ralph to draw a unicorn? <laughs> I am going to draw. I am going to draw a unicorn. I, I got to do a very simple unicorn. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we got the two circles, the two circles in there, and I'm going to make like triangles hanging down. Triangles hanging down, and I'll even put triangles in between these. So I got triangles hanging down. And I'm gonna make a wiggly line for a neck. So I've got all these triangles and a wiggly line for a neck. It's got a really skinny neck. And then right here, I'm gonna do a half circle. So this is a this weird head and a half circle, but then I'm gonna put a rectangle right here. And make that into a rectangle. Yep. And underneath this, a smile or a half circle going around like this. And then a wavy line going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's going to be a ballerina dancer. So we got our little tutu, roughly tutu. And I'm going to have two triangular legs going down, one going down like this, and one going down like this. Those are long, skinny triangles. And then I'm going to make, now you don't have to make yours look like a ballerina. I'm, I'm doing this because I feel like making a ballerina monster. Um, a smile or a letter U, letter U. Then an X, and to tie those off a loop and a loop, a loop and a loop, and you can put little strings hanging down like this. So you got a letter U, an X, an X, a loop and a loop. Now we need some arms. So I'm gonna make little arms going out like this. And we can make a little half circle claws here. That's like a half circle and a half circle, half circle, half circle for the little claws. And on the top of this thing, I'm going to have, I put a rectangle up here in the sky. And I'm going to make a line going up and a line going up and a line going like this. It's going to be a ponytail. And this, so you got little lines going up, rectangle, little lines going up to a point. And then you're going to go out and out and out and out. And then a wavy line and a wavy line. And I like to put a rectangle behind here, too. There's my little ballerina dancer. And I'll put a little heart there. So there's a little fun, silly, goofy creature that you can make. Um, and you could change it. You could, you could put a Viking helmet on its head. Um, it could have jet engines coming out of the bottom, but have some fun. You guys have been kind of cooped up. Use your imagination. Use your creativity to create some strange creatures. Make a whole family of them. I know you guys could do this. You could do all kinds of different things with your drawings. And again, I'm going to sign my name here, Ralph Macaroni and Cheese. Jerry, while I'm getting another piece of paper, you want to get, say anything? Uh, 
I think Ralph's going to draw our unicorn next. And uh, uh, Mary Alice, uh, who's in the background, I can't read what it's saying. So, okay, I'll, in the background. I'll jump in and just say yeah. that the comments are Ralph is a great teacher. He, like, comments, I can even do this. Thank you, Ralph. Ralph is amazing. So, this is incredible. You're welcome. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. I love doing this with kids and teachers. Um, and Ralph, we've told them to like share their creations and tag you on social media. That would be great. Um, on um, Twitter, I think it's just my name, Ralph Massiello. On Instagram, it's Ralph Paints, one word, Ralph Paints. Um, and then, of course, I'm on Facebook under my real name. So if anybody uh, wants to check that out. Okay, so uh, before I do the unicorn, I want to do something super, super, super simple. And kids seem to love drawing this thing because it is so simple. This is literally going to take a minute to do the entire drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some water. So here's some water. Right, here's some water. Very simple, very simple. Little kids can draw this. Kids love drawing sharks. So we're gonna have a big dorsal fin coming up out of the water. So you're gonna go up and curve this way. You're gonna go up and curve this way. A little bit of a point at the end. You're gonna go down and curve that way. And sharks have a little pointy thing in the end. You know, they have a little barb on the end. So it's like a Kind of like a letter C, but not really. And then it's going to go down into the water. So now you have your, your, your shark swimming through the water. Now, if you want to get really goofy, which I like to do, underwater, you could have the big shark's body underwater. But you know what? My shark is not going to be a shark. It's going to go around. And it's going to go like this. And it's going to have a big eyeball. And I'm gonna put a little smile and a little nostril and a gill, which is like a little smile on its side, a triangle for a little fin, a triangle for a little fin, a triangle for a little fin, and then the back fin like that. So here he's, he's kind of a faker. He's not a real shark, but he's pretending he's a shark. And you could actually have a little bit of the other eyeball on the other side if you want to make a little bit of the other eyeball on the other side like that. So there's a goofy little fake shark, a shark that's not a shark, but he wants to be a shark. He's got ambitions of being a shark. And you could even add, um, you could add another little fin right here, maybe. Another little fin right there. And if you wanted to, you could have seaweed coming up from the bottom. So these are lines that wiggle. See, I just make a wiggly line. Just make wiggly lines. And then you go to the top and you wiggle back and forth. You go to the top and you wiggle back and forth. You go to the top and you wiggle back and forth. Now you've got your, your seaweed. I like to add a little cloud in the background. Maybe I'll add a little cloud. There's a big cloud in the background here. And maybe another cloud behind it. So you can actually fill up your drawings with with other things, you could have birds flying by. So, so there's my my goofy little uh, fake shark. Again, I'm gonna sign my name here, Ralph Massiello is my name, and a uh, little copyright symbol too. You can again, you can copy these if you want. Jerry, you got anything else to say? I, I got. I want. Two, can I have? Can I have time to do two more drawings? Or do we have enough time for two more drawings? And I'll finish with a unicorn. What are you doing? You got here. We'll do them. I'm sorry. Go ahead, do them. Okay, so I'm gonna get another piece of paper. There's another piece of paper. It's more tape here. So as you can see, this uh, this table works great as an easel. And if you're 
homeschooling your kids right now. You've got a bunch of kids. It's a great thing to put up nice and tall, uh, maybe in a garage or in a, a basement or a family room or something. And your kids can actually sit down and draw along with you. Um, I, I actually kind of like, I like the surface is nice and tall. So this next one. Yeah. Someone, someone has called in and said, uh, Linda, some lady named Linda. And she says, do you always draw standing up? I know that when you're at schools, you're always standing up during your presentation and when you're teaching kids. But when, when you're, let's say you're painting at home, like the skull book, would you be sitting down painting those I mean, skulls? I'm sitting down at my desk um, and I have a big drafting table. And what I do is I have an angled piece of board where I can put my, my drawing or painting on, on an angle. So it's actually comfortable for me to draw or paint on. Um, sometimes I use a big easel. Uh, I have been using easels. Uh, regular easels to paint on in a long time. I find it easier to sit at my desk and have something kind of tilted and have all my stuff spread out over my page. Um, somebody said I was drawing too fast. Um, so I'll do a, uh, I'll do one that's a little, little slower. And um, this one is kind of, kind of silly. Um, and I'm gonna use black, even though this shouldn't be black, I'm gonna use black so it'll show up. What I'm gonna do here is in the middle of your paper, I'm gonna make a kind of a bumpy upside down letter U. It's gonna be kind of something fun to, fun to draw. Kind of silly too, a bumpy upside down letter U. It's kind of a bumpy upside down letter U. I don't know if you guys can see that. Bumpy upside down letter U and then right here, we're going to make a letter C and a backwards letter C right here. So you're going to make a letter C and I kind of make that bumpy too. And a backwards letter C. It looks like a head with ears, doesn't it? But then at the bottom, we're going to make a bumpy line going across. So you want to connect these together. Bumpy, 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 bumpy line. Jerry, you know what it's going to be yet? I think it's a, a chocolate chip ice cream cone. You're right, it's gonna be an ice cream cone. And so right here, and everybody wants ice cream. They want to, everybody wants to go out now. It's getting, getting to the point where everybody wants to get out. We want these ice cream places to be open so we can all go out again and, and enjoy our ice cream. So right here, you're gonna make a letter V. A skinny, 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 skinny letter V. Letter V, you're gonna go down and you're gonna go down. I like a sugar cone on mine. Now, if you remember sugar cones, when you get your ice cream cone, there's lines that curve around it. So this is gonna be this is gonna be like a spiral. So you're gonna make a, a line that curves around. So I'm gonna I actually gonna start right here. Line that curves around, line that curves around, line that curves around, line that curves around. But then you're gonna make them go the opposite way. You gotta curve this way. So you got lines going this way, then you're gonna go this way. Now you don't need those, but I like to make it look kind of more realistic. So I'm gonna make a line that curves around, curves around, curves around, curves around. So there's my ice cream. You can put some sprinkles or something on there, but I like to make a cherry. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna use red because it probably won't show up real well. So I'm gonna make a bump that kind of looks like a heart shape that's disappearing over here kind of like a heart shape that's disappearing right there. So, so I got two cherries with stems. I'll make a little bump on the end of the stems. This is gonna get weird. Now it's gonna get strange. Pretend this is gonna be an insect. So there's the two eyes of your insect. There's the head of your insect. Right here and right here, we're gonna make a line that goes out like this and out like this. So it's got like, its arms are out like this, like dun, 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 dun. Go about halfway down your cone. So you got one line goes out like this and one line goes out like this. Now, if, if I'm going too fast later on, you can actually go back and watch this on YouTube. I, right, Jerry, you can, they can actually watch it again on YouTube. Okay, so right about halfway down, I'm gonna make a line that kind of goes almost straight out, but not real long almost straight up, but not real long. 
And then at the very bottom here, I'm gonna make a line that goes down and curves a little bit that way. Goes down and curves a little bit like that. What are those legs? What is this thing, Jerry? Do you know what it is? I think I do. Right I think here. The... It's a what? I think those are wings. Those are gonna be wings. So up here, I'm gonna make a bumpy line. Bumpy, 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 and touch that line. Over here, I'm gonna make bumpy, 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 touch that line. And then the bottom wings, so those are the upper wings, then the bottom wings, bumpy, 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 bumpy. Bumpy, 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 bumpy. And then like butterfly wings, they have what, what are called cells on the wings. So we're gonna make like a loop that looks like a teardrop shape or a raindrop shape sticking out this way and a raindrop shape sticking out this way. I'm gonna do the same here, raindrop shape going down like this and a raindrop shape going down like this. And then you'll add lines going from that to the edges of the wings. So you're gonna go from the raindrop to the edge of the wing. From the raindrop to the edge of the wing. From the raindrop to the edge of the wing. It's a flying ice cream cone. There you go. Ralph. Meatball. What'd you think of that one, Jerry? I really like it. That's a fun one. You know, the, the, the whole idea behind these is I like when kids follow along and do the actual one, but I like to try to get kids thinking about what they could do on their own. You know, that's all well and good for me to draw and you guys to follow along, but it's more fun to see what kids do with it afterwards. I love seeing what kids do with the drawings afterwards. Maybe some kid doesn't want to put butterfly wings on it. Maybe they put bat wings on it. Maybe it's a, a bat winged ice cream cone. Maybe there's a you know banana sticking out of its head or something. Well, you know, who knows? So I'm gonna put this one down and, and uh, we'll do a unicorn. Ralphie, we're almost done. So yep, it's time to do a uniform. This will finish up the show. Thank you everybody for watching us. And uh, when you travel around the country right now, unicorns are really uh, popular. When you walk into a kids have unicorn caps on, they have unicorn shirts. I went to an ice cream place recently in Boston and for an extra dollar, you could have a unicorn horn put on the top of your ice cream cone. So not only did the cone go this way, then they had a little unicorn top, little unicorn top of on um, above so there you go here I, we go i'm gonna do a really simple 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 unicorn but um in my uh, my uh, the the mystic files beast book i did a unicorn i showed this last week too uh, but when i'm going to do a really detailed unicorn it would be more something like like this right here so that's a uh, that's from an oil painting that I did. And, and actually that's, that's actually owned by the, the painting is owned by uh, the publishing company, Charles Bridge Publishing in Watertown, Mass. Um, they have that in their, in, in their uh, publishing company up on the wall. So this one I'm gonna do today is actually gonna be super, super, super simple. Almost to the point where it's like a cartoon and you can add your own little things to it. Hold your paper the tall way. And the cool thing about unicorn horns, if you do a little research in the unicorn horns, they're not always spiraled ones. Sometimes they look like a, a stag horn. Sometimes they look like branches. Um, if you look at different unicorn styles throughout the history. So with our unicorn, this particular unicorn, um, this is gonna have just geometric shapes for the body parts. So the head is gonna be like an egg shape on its side right here. The body is gonna be an oval right here. Then we're gonna connect those, connect the head to the body. So 
I use my finger before I even draw. Sometimes I'll use my finger to go, okay, that's where that's going to go. That's where that's going to go. The neck's going to be here. The tail's going to be here. I'm going to add a wing on it later. So the wing's going to be here and the unicorn horn's going to be here. So I want to figure out, do I have enough room? Where is it going to fit? Head, body, tail, wing, horn. Okay, so right here, we're going to make the head and it's going to be super, super, super simple. It's an egg shape on its side. You know, the snout of the unicorn is going to be a little longer than the back part of the head. So you're going to go and this is not going to be a perfect unicorn, obviously. There's the, uh, the head. It's just like an egg shape on its side. Okay. I want to put an ear. You could do just triangles. I'll do, for little kids, I'm just going to do a little triangle sticking up. One ear is a triangle here. And one ear is a triangle here. Doesn't look like much now. And we're not going to put the horn on it yet. Because what I want to do is I want to make the neck. I'm not even going to put the nose and the eyes on it yet. From the back of the egg shape, we're going to make a line that goes down like this. It's going to go, you follow your finger, you go around, you follow it and go woo, down like that. So it's going to go woo, down like that. The neck. Go under the chin, under the jaw. Right here, we're gonna go down like this. So this is gonna go down like this. So this one's gonna go down like this. You're gonna make the body right here with an oval. We're gonna go down and around and touch that. So this oval isn't gonna to connect together. So you're gonna to start at the end here. You're gonna go around and touch the neck. Now, if you want to make a regular, uh, the oval go all the way, that's fine because la later on you could put another line in there and you could put jewels in here. Maybe it's got a little collar right there. Okay, so you got a little neck. The legs, I'm gonna have this leg going out, this leg going out. These legs are gonna go down. These are just going to be like two lines getting, this one's going to go out and out. And then you're going to connect it together. This one's going to go out and then behind that one. You want to have the hooves on the end. So make some hooves. This one, these legs are going to kind of go down like this. Down like that. And this one goes down and hides behind there. And you put your hooves on there. Again, super simple. This is not a realistic one. Kind of looks like a dog. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go back up here, make a little loop for a nose, a little spiral for a nose. And I'm gonna make a muzzle going around like this. And I'll put a little smile right here. And then the I is a letter V on its side. Make a little line that curves around here. And I'm gonna make that white spot on the eye. And you can put eyelashes on that, on that letter V if you want. This is really goofy looking. It's got a big body. I'm gonna have a wing coming up off my unicorn. See, I haven't put the unicorn horn on it yet. I have a line that goes up. Then loop, 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 loop. And then right here, we're gonna go. So you go up, loop, 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 loop. And then make loop, 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 loop. If you want to get really fancy, you can make another wing on the other side. We're going to have some mane on it. You have to have the, the mane on your unicorn. So I'm going to make lines that go out right here. Okay, so you want to have the mane, pretty mane. I like to have my mane kind of wild looking. So make 
behind the ear, a wiggly line going out, then wiggle in, then wiggle out, then wiggle in, then wiggle out, wiggle in, wiggle out. This one's gonna hide behind the wing. And right here, wiggle out, wiggle in, wiggle out, wiggle in. And we gotta need the unicorn horn up here. That's gonna be like a triangle, but we gotta do the tail. And the tail, we're gonna kind of do like the mane, you're gonna wiggle up, then wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I gotta do like a wiggly line like this. There's my tail. And I know I'm going really fast, but I know we need to finish up. I'm gonna make the unicorn horn coming up. Now remember, it's a triangle. Go up, then back down, and then a line and a line and a line. It curves around like this. And there you have your little unicorn. It's a simple, simple unicorn. It's a, actually more like a Pegasus unicorn. I'll make the other wing on the other side. You can actually make the other wing on the other side like that. There you um, go, what do you think, Jerry? I can't, I'm sorry, today I can't see what that person said. Susan from Colorado said something. Do you have a favorite drawing utensil, i.e. pencil, chalk marker? Uh, I particularly like, um, I, I'm an oil painter, so I use a, I use really good oil paints, but I'm, I wanted to share this, and, and I'm glad somebody asked it. One of my favorite drawing utensils, and if your parents um, want your kids to have like the best drawing pencil, they're called black wings. I don't know if you can see that box. And I use the, the black wing softs and there's the actual pencil. I don't know if you can see that. There's the actual pencil. And the cool thing about these, great lead, very velvety. Um, the eraser comes out and as you wear it down, you can actually pull it up. I don't know if you can see, but you can actually slide it up and you can extend the eraser and stick it back down in there. So every time your eraser gets worn down a little bit, you can pull that thing out and extend the eraser. These are like, like really good quality um, um, pencils. It's called the Palomino, Palomino, Blackwing Palomino. And you can see, I buy, I buy lots of them. Um, as far as markers go, I tend to use uh, Microns, uh, Micron pen, uh, pens and pencils, because they're really consistent. Um, oil paints, I use uh, the professional grade Windsor Newton. I actually use a uh, walnut oil paints to do those. Um, so there you have it. If you want to add some things here, like maybe I'll add like a, you know, like something going around here, like maybe it's got some scales on it. Anything else, Jerry? You can Thank add you. little things. We're out of time. Thank you for the terrific drawing lessons. I hope the kids a good time so the next the next the next drawing lesson that i'm going to do it will be actually more detailed stuff for, for older yes. kids now these are really the younger kids and i know there's a variety of ages here there's probably some preschool and kindergarten kids um with the older ones i can't hear you jerry your mic's off. will you come back next week and do drawings for older kids yeah i'd love to do that and there'll be much more difficult drawings much hey, more difficult drawings. I want to watch you draw a dragon again. Bye, everybody. Thank you for having. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I want to check out the comments before before you close this thing out, Jamie. So uh, let me uh, let me take a look at the the, the comments. And, and uh, thank you, everybody, for for uh, checking in. I hope everybody's doing well and being safe. Thank you to Jamie, Ariel, our secret weapons in the background. Thank you very much today. Thank you, Ralphie.